What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today of course we're continuing with the home lab server project. We're using the Zima board. Uh, I think this might be the last video with what we're going to add to it just because there's really not too much more I think we need to add to it. But today we are going to be working on doing a Docker environment and we're going to set up some containers that I think are pretty important in the home lab. It's stuff that I use almost every day so I think other people will use it so it's really important to have running on your home lab. So Zima board's a good platform, so we're gonna set up a Docker machine and we're gonna get going. So let's get right into it. So if we come over into the environment, you can see that the server is still running. I have the Pi-hole container, the Jellyfin server running. I actually just restarted the server because something was eating up a ton of memory. I don't know if there was a data leak somewhere or that it was just standing still at idle with a lot of memory. So I gave it a reboot and now we're back down because we are only using about two and a half gigs of memory for our machines. So I restarted it and now we're looking better. So now we're going to set up the machine for um, the Docker environment. So we're going to use Ubuntu server. I'm going to make an actual VM and we're going to get going. So I'm going to come over to create VM. We're going to call it Docker. Now, I'm running this out of a Docker environment because I feel that it would be better than running just a container. So I'm running a full Docker environment off of, of a VM because if I ran it off of um, just a container, it shares the kernel and other stuff. So I feel like running a regular VM is worth it for this. And plus, I have more resources available. So I'm just going to give it a full VM and give it what I need. So I'm just going to give it 50 gigs because I think that should be plenty. We're going to use the Z pool. And then for cores, I think I'll give it two. And then for memory, I'm going to give it two gigs of RAM. And then we'll come over here and we'll finish it up. And we'll start that up. So I did just create that. You can see I still have plenty of CPU power and plenty of RAM available. So I do have more if I do need to add on to it. But I think we'll be okay. So I'm just going to start this up. I'm going to go through the setup for this machine, then we'll come back, we'll set up the Docker environment, and get that all going. So I'll be back after the Ubuntu server is all set up. Alright, now after a little bit, we have this ready to log in. So I'm just going to log in real quick, and grab the IP, the SSH pin, and then I'll do some updates. So let's see. Uh, I logged in wrong. There we go. Come over, my IP is uh, 53. So I'm going to put it in. Make it a little bit bigger so we could all see. And there we go. So we have that. Just do a update. we we'll go through these and then uh, we've got one more time and then we'll set up the Docker environment. In the meantime, while that finishes updating, we're going to come over here and start getting the GitHub ready. So I just came over here and I searched Pi self-hosted on Google and here comes up all the information. I have the GitHub repo and I also have an Oversphere text channel. So this is my friend of mine and he was the creator with some other collaborators for all this stuff. We've used this in the past, but if you're new, maybe you're not aware of it. So there's the GitHub and it has all the information from setting up Docker, Portainer, and how to get the app templates in. So it has a whole bunch of videos for the other containers. And um, yeah, it has everything in here. So this is what we're actually gonna be using and it has all the scripts and commands we need to actually run to get Docker and Portainer installed. So right after this is all set, we're about done upgrading, we're gonna start running to get this installed. So I'm just gonna put that over here, put this over here. And we'll be all set. So this is just about done, and then we'll start the running the commands. So all my updates and upgrades are all done. So I have all the latest packages and repositories that I need. So now we can start running the commands and have no issues. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm just going to grab this wget command. Um, so you can do run docker install over here, or run install docker, but that's if you copy over the repository and stuff. So I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to do sudo paste the command. And I'm going to run it. So this is going to start the Docker install, and they'll install Docker so we can actually go over there and then from there run uh, Portainer and everything else all over it. So you can see this is starting to run and it's going to install Docker, and then afterwards we'll be able to continue over and install Portainer. Um, if you're following along for this, we are running on AMD64. 
So in return, we don't need to worry about this Pi OS Buster over here in the write-up. This is, was if you're running it on a Raspberry Pi, and it needs certain versions of Bullseye to work properly. So we can skip through this, and then afterward, the machine will reboot, and that's when we can pick back up. So we're going to wait for this to finish installing, and then we're going to reboot the machine, and then we'll finish up. So we finished the install, so I'm just going to do a quick reboot, and then after that we'll be able to finish up the whole process. So I'll give this a second to get back online, and then we will start running the rest of these commands, and then we just really got to come over here and run the portainer commands, and then we're all set, so we'll get that done in a second. So my machine's back, oh, so I'm just going to log in, and then we will get a clear. So now we can see we're back at the top. So when I come over here to the right for the commands, you can see that over here stuff kind of joined together. So if you already have Portainer running, you only need the bottom command, but if you don't have it yet, you just need the top command. The top command is the actual install command. So uh, I actually just want to add sudo to this. So I'm just going to go all the way back. And then we paste it in and we're going to run the command. And this is just going to install Portainer. So now Portainer will be installed over Docker and give us like a graphical interface to work with instead of just using the command line to run all of our Docker stuff. So you can just run Docker off the command line off of you know Ubuntu server, but it is a little bit trickier. So if you have the Portainer, it is a nice uh, interface, makes it a lot nicer. So then we are all set and we can come over to Firefox again make this bigger and we can come over to 192.168.50.53 and then it is 9000 next we come over to portainer so it's going to ask for my username so I'm going to give it carmine I'll give it a password password always throws me off because I want 12 characters so it kind of messes me up um, when you come to log in, uh, mine it was 53, but yours is going to be whatever your host was for your virtual machine. And then it's just the port, so it's just colon 9000 so you could access this web page. My passwords didn't match, but we're all set now, so I'm going to create my user. I don't want to save right now. If you have multiple environments, you could add to others, but I'm just going to get this as a standalone. So you just click over here on the left on Get Started. And now your environment is running. And there's one last thing we need to do is come back over here and grab the app template. So I'm grabbing the AMD 64 one. If you're running on an ARM 64 board, you can grab it from there. And then we're gonna come over to settings. Uh, no, we're gonna come over, yeah, we're gonna come to settings, sorry. And um, over here, you're gonna see app templates. We're gonna clear this one out. And we're gonna paste in the one we just got. Uh, oh, just gonna come over here and copy it again. There we go, that's what we want. We'll save that and then we're going to come over to environment we're going to click local we're going to give it the ip address so i know it says public ip but it really just wants the ip of the machine so that's when we open up a container it actually pulls the ip address and it doesn't just give you zero 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 to the port so you can actually open your container it knows where to go to so now we're all set so we can click local and we can click app templates and over here we have all the different app templates from the Hosted, the self-hosted uh, template. So some of the ones that I really like to run are Cloudflare DDNS. I've done a video on this before, so I'll have that in the description. I'll put a card up here. This gives you a static DDNS out of your environment to a domain. So it's really nice, makes it really simple, especially if you're gonna use a VPN, so if anything changes. I also like WireGuard super helpful because you have a uh, VPN then, you have FireGuard server over here. And there are other ones that you can run, I want to fix this just so it's neat again. Um, you could of course run PyHole over, over here if you want to, but we already set that up. There's AdGuard, you do need to disable DNS and for port 53 on this box, but it does work nicely. There's a bunch of other different containers on here, you have GoSox 5 Proxy. I did a video on that, and you could do that for a VPN proxy all the way out. There's the different dashboards. So you could have uh, Flame. Let's see. We passed it already. There's Overseer is in here. So there's a lot of good containers in here to work with that I think are really beneficial for the home lab. So we have, let's see, we have Overseer. 
Over here is a fork or jelly sear, and it's a request system that could work with Plex or Jellyfin, so that's really nice. We also have Flame Dashboard. We worked on them in the past. It's actually my homepage for my whole home lab that has all my shortcuts to everything I use, so that's also a nice one. There's also other dashboards as well. If you ever want to look through, you can look through as categories. So you have Dashy, Heimdall, Homepage. Um, you can also switch around. We have stuff for books, backups. I, I run Duplicity because it's really helpful to make sure I don't lose my files. There's a bunch of different stuff. There's authentication, so you could have your own authentication server. But I think that these are very beneficial to host on the home lab, especially on this new box that we're going to be running. So I'm not going to go through how to install each container, but I will just go over really quickly how to install a container. So the way that this self-hosted series template works is that it writes to a certain directories and paths and everything in here will match up so it works properly. So once you write the first container, it's going to create the paths and then from there you can keep deploying containers and it'll just keep adding into there. So if you want to just deploy your first container to make it easier, I usually just do like archive box. It's a simple one. It has no requirements. I just deploy the container. From there, it's going to write all the file paths and everything else I need, and then we can go through and continue adding on stuff. Some of the other ones like WireGuard and um, like Cloudflare DDNS, they have a little bit extra you need to add to them. So that's why I say you might want to reference my videos the way I talked about them, so you can really set them up the right way because you need um, tokens and everything else. But this is a quick one just to write the file paths out. It's going to deploy, and then it'll let us know when it's all done, and then we'll be good to go. So I'll give it a second to finish deploying. So we're back, I just finished deploying. So I just did archive box as a blank, but if I come over to my machine again, I'll do a clear, so I'll do dir, so it'll be um, cd slash portainer. I'm gonna do dir again, we have files, and I have data, uh, config, I think that should be it. So now we have archive box. So as you continue to deploy more containers, They'll show up in here, and this is where you'll actually see all your info and everything else. You can CD into there if you want, and you can see all the configs and everything else in there. But that's how it works. It comes out here and gives you this nice directory, and that's the benefit of using this app template is that everything is written so it works with this. There's no mapping different paths and everything else. Unless you're using something that has to grab like a network share or something else. All the config files are going to go under this file path and makes it really nice because everything's going to work. There's nothing left for you to try to figure out. One thing I did notice is that this machine is using a lot of memory. I don't know if it's just like a current data leak. I do know Portainer does use a lot of memory, so you might need to size it up on your environment. I did it because this is what I have. I'm working with this server for what I have. If I come over here, you can see my RAM is pretty much maxed out. So this is something to keep in mind, really I would give, if I was making a dock environment, I would give it more RAM and definitely more CPU, but you could definitely get some stuff running on here, and I don't know, you might run into some issues down the road if you try to do it as minimal as I can, but this is what we set up. So that's how we set up Docker and Portainer again. I know I've covered it in the past, but now we did it on the Zima Ward Home Lab server, and we can see we're kind of having some issues with resources once again. But we are running a lot of stuff on this server. I mean, we have a Jellyfin server, we have Pi-hole running, and now we have Docker running. So those are three big services to be running with four cores and eight gigs of RAM. So I'm happy with it. Um, I hope you guys like the video. So I do have other ones for the series. I'll have it below in the description, and you probably saw them if you've been watching the channel. Now, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. It really helps so you get to see when I post videos and it helps the channel continue to grow. As well, if you want to drop a like and comment anything like your favorite Docker container or you know ones that you commonly use. For me, I use WireGuard, PyHole, I use um, Cloudflare, DDNS, and a ton of other ones. I love using Docker. I use it for all my Plex stuff, for Sonar, Radar, all that good stuff, but I've been going for that for a while. Uh, I appreciate everybody for watching the video. I do have a Discord server. I'll have a link to that below as well as all Amazon links to the equipment that I used in this video. So if you do want to check out some of the equipment that I use, click the links below and uh, yeah, check out the, hard the hardware, hard drive, stuff like that. Appreciate everybody for watching. I'll see you in the next video.